योगेन चित्तस्य पदेन वाचा मल शरीर से वैद्यकन योपाकोत प्रवर मुनीना पतंजलि प्राजलिरान आबापुरुषाकार शंखचक्रासीधारिण सहस्रशिसम श्वेत प्रणमा पतंजलि गुड मॉर्निंग होप यू बिन फाइंडिंग द एपिसोड सो फार बोथ यूजफुल एंड इन्फॉर्मेटिव इन टूडेज एपिसोड वील बी सींग उत्तान आसना which is a standing asana in the forward extension state forward extensions are also called paschima pratana sthiti where the spine is extending forward in a concave back position i would like to clarify that for all poses where you are extending forward it is absolutely essential that the spine is sharply taken in a concave back position as this ensures that the spinal muscles nerves as well as the vertebra of the spine are aligned and positioned properly without compression for this reason in today's episode we will see the asanas in two states one is the concave back variation and one is the final pose where the head is released downward now we will see how to do uttanasan as well as address some pertinent conditions or queries with regard to uttanasana we have now seen the pose uttanasan we'll now run you through the instructions of how to do it like any standing pose it all starts from tadasan and therefore the practitioner has the feet and toes together shoulders rolled back chest alive lifted back ribs in buttock muscle down thigh gripped back in this position the practitioner has to open the legs hip width apart At this point I would like to say that there are many approaches to doing uttanasan we are starting with the legs apart and then we'll take you through the classical pose where the legs are together now standing with the legs apart hip width apart which means outer hip the region of the outer hip and the outer ankle must be in line here it's a little wider so I'd like to narrow it a little bit from there rolling the shoulders back sharply cutting the back of the shoulder back of the trapezius down the practitioner must take the hand on the waist usually as you will see if the elbow flares out the chest will sink and therefore the shoulder must be rolled wide and the elbow must be tucked a little inward than outward raising the chest up particularly in uttanasan it's important to keep the sternum away from the abdomen it's common that practitioners during the process of moving to uttanasan 
collapse the chest and go that could be injurious to the spine so the chest must be lifted high away such that every vertebra inside the spine is well spaced it shouldn't crush or collapse so once again note the fact that the sternum is lifted away from the band of the diaphragm is important leading with the sternum the practitioner should move with the chest forward halfway this is the concave back position a mandatory precursor to the final pose in the concave back position the back ribs must fully engage forward the chest must stand forward therefore we should call it a forward extension not a forward bend the spine should extend forward with the back ribs deeply engaged at this point where the body is parallel to the ground the practitioner will release the palm in such a way that the palm is in line with the shoulder palm is in line with the shoulder this position is the concave back position here from the chest from the frontal face of the spine the practitioner has to extend forward as if the spine is being pulled through the throat to the chin spine extending via the sternum via the throat into the chin you will have to lead forward uh, the head will not collapse down if the head collapses down as you see the chest sinks the extension of the throat keeps the head lifted up there we have to make sure that the thigh is clearly separated from the body the thigh must be gripped back knee must be locked sucked up knee cap must be sucked up shin must be the entire limb must be cut deep back at this point the back thigh must roll inside out by inside out this is the inner thigh this is the outer thigh the roll of the thigh should be inside out so that all of the hamstrings are evenly used sides of the thigh must remain lifted up from this lift the chest must move forward in this concave back position a beginner must wait for a few seconds going to a minute or so until the the pose prepares the spine fully from there the hands are brought back to the sides of the feet in a cup shaped position as you see here the spine lowers but again the spine should not collapse so engaging the back ribs you have to create a concave back first that's a very important position the concave back position for all standing forward bends or forward bends concave back is an important state from there you will have to flatten the hands down by the sides of the feet prevent yourself from going down too quickly flattening the arm straightening flattening the palm straightening the arm move with the chin and throat forward then lengthening the sides of the body without crumpling the abdomen lengthening the sides of the body the head must be taken down such that the buttock bone is in line with the heel bone forming a straight line and as if it's a single pose lifting the thigh up releasing the body down the way a stream flows continuous the extension has to be from the back of the thigh over the buttock releasing the latissimus releasing the paraspinal muscles the head has to be taken in once you go to this juncture the hand must be further walked back all the way behind and then the attempt must be made to bring the back ribs closer to the back thigh to bridge the gap between the thigh and the chest the entire body should fuse as if it's a single without gaps without breaking that single flow of the movement from this position finishing the pose you walk back to concave back position where the hand is in line with the shoulder once again making sure you're creating a steadfast extension you have to then come up with the hand on the waist and this will complete the first section of the pose we saw the pose in 2.1